you don't look like you could have been a battered woman. And I said, what does a battered woman look like? Because I've been abused, so presumably they just look normal, like me. Um, yeah, this is uh, people's perceptions of what women are like. I met his son first. Um, he played with my children. Charming, polite, he had nice white teeth with a big smile. And um, that it just went from there, really. He made me laugh. So yeah, he kind of got me with that. And my mum said, a couple of years down the line, yeah, you were laughing on the other side of your face, weren't you? I'll never forget her saying that. But yeah, you made me laugh. So at first it was the charming side. So I didn't see, you know, what was coming, really. The first time he actually punched me was when my daughter was about a week old. And it just got worse. And no matter what I did, it got it just it, it just added more and more and more to it. So um, before I knew it, I was in I was in really deeply. The most intense torture was the last one, which went on for four days. He accused me of looking at this guy in the pub, and I hadn't been. And I know I hadn't been, because I literally used to always look down at the ground. Um, and he stopped the car. It started off on a Sunday afternoon and he smashed a glass in my face because he was angry about something. And um, he just, all of a sudden, just grabbed me from across the room. He grabbed me by the throat. And he literally just whacked me straight in the, fa in the face. And I felt my nose break and he was pressing his whole weight onto my, onto my neck with his hands. And I could feel myself becoming, um, I could feel myself blacking out. But I managed to pull him down, which annoyed him some more, so he went to the shed and got a blowtorch and attacked me with a blowtorch. Daniel, my eldest, actually witnessed that. The other children didn't see that. He stopped because the kids were screaming. It's actually the biggest etched horrible memory that I have of Daniel on his knees, helpless, watching what his father was doing um, because there was nobody to stop him doing it. And I said to him, that's the last time you will ever do that. And he just laughed at me. And, and I, I do actually remember thinking, oh, shit, I've got to do it now, you know? Because if I don't, I'm never going to get out of here. That wasn't the end of it, <laughs> but um, I never went back to him. And uh, I stayed in hospital for two days, but they told the police about what had happened. And they involved social services because I had the children. And um, they said if I didn't go into refuge then, that they would take my children away. So. It was, you know, there was no question. Or well, wouldn't be studying now talking to you. If you don't have a place where you can go to, you end up going back. And it's simple as that. I heard my children laugh. And I realised I hadn't heard that for such a long time. You get held in a room and you think, am I going to be alive like 10 minutes from now? It makes you relook life, what's important. What should I have done while I was alive before? If I make it through this, what am I going to do? So every day that I wake up now is a gift. You've got to have that choice of somewhere to go. Because there are people out there that can help you. It's just finding them. People have referred to me in the past as an expert, and I feel quite insulted by that. When, what am I an expert in getting, getting beaten up, you know? So yes, I would say I'm a survivor. Yeah, people say victim, survivor. I'm kind of definitely a survivor because I've died and come back, so it's like you, I'm a survivor. Definitely, definitely. Oh, Mandy Wood. My name's Sharon Bryan. My name is Dawn Lee. And um, I'm a survivor because of, of women's aid. <laughs>